We have here with us today Dr. Prem Sheth, consultant neonatologist and head of department pediatrics Bombay Hospital. We will be speaking on neonatal jaundice. How does one define neonatal jaundice? Occurrence of jaundice, that is yellowish coloration of skin and sclera, is due to accumulation, uh, accumulation of bilirubin is called jaundice. Basically, it is due to the production, increased production of bilirubin. And why? Because there is excessive blockage or breakdown of RBCs, that's number one. Number two, there is increased reabsorption of bile because sometimes a late meconium being passed. Third, decreased rumor of bilirubin due to transient liver enzyme insufficiency, glucuronin transferase. And that leads to a neonatal jaundice. How does one differentiate physiological from pathological jaundice? Physiological jaundice normally occurs on the third day to fourth day. It reaches its peak on the seventh day and it starts disappearing or coming down by 14 days and that is physiological jaundice. Should babies with jaundice be discharged from the hospital? It all depends on the jaundice, which day the jaundice has appeared, one. Two, how deep is the jaundice? Three, what is the weight of the baby's jaundice, baby which is jaundiced? So there are multiple reasons which baby is to be discharged. For example, at the moment when we are talking of physiological jaundice, the jaundice which has appeared on the third day, and it is reaching on the fourth or seventh day and then you have three days the child is fine you discharge the child but that kid I would rather get him for follow-up to see whether the jaundice has disappeared or not whereas if the jaundice has appeared on the first day which the cause of jaundice cannot be physiological jaundice but it can be other causes like hemorrhage kephal hematoma or anything and you want to know you have a reason, then you can discharge the child. But if you know that there is an ABO or RH incompatibility, please don't discharge till we know how is the condition of the child. What line of treatment would you recommend for neonatal jaundice? As I said, it all depends on what is the cause of jaundice. If it is physiological jaundice, absolutely nothing. Sometimes the physiological jaundice may be exaggerated jaundice. Why? Because we have got late feeding, that's number one. Number two, the baby is preterm. Number three, the baby has not passed stool for a day or two. As I said in the first thing that it is the reasons for it to increase the jaundice. Or the weight baby has not taken the feeds well, so it's more of a dehydration. There is we have to find out the cause and look after it. Improve the feeding, see the baby passes the stool and then follow up the child. Second cause, if it is ABO or RH uh, incompatibility, then we have to look into it. These are the children, babies. We are antenatally look at mother is A negative, father is positive, indirect Coombs is done. Then from the cord blood we do direct Coombs and we know that if Coombs is positive, the mother baby's cord blood is showing Coombs positive, hemoglobin low, high bilirubin require an exchange transfusion. There is a group of babies where you may get just a little jaundice and ABO incompatibility which is more of AB incompatibility then you start with phototherapy. So the management depends what is the cause of jaundice. But any jaundice which persists for a long time, one has to think of it. Any jaundice which happens in a sick child has, a bad, has to be given a thought. Any bay jaundice which happens in a preterm child, one has to give a thought. Reason being that in a newborn, more so in prematures, the blood-brain barrier is very poor. So we land up into connectors or any other problems. Ma'am, what would be the signs of uh, these complications appearing, connectors, etc.? The signs, connectors, it's 
look at the baby who is taking feet, stop taking feet, to the baby starts arching. He has a retraction of nape. He, his eyes are looking here and there. He is starting a mild tremors or convulsion and or sometimes a full generalized convulsion. So first of all, you quickly look at a kid who was a happy child who was feeding is either excessively jittery or drowsy. That's point number one. Number two, a little retraction. You you look at the baby and he's retracting. My God, it, it's it's no fix that he's not going to get connectives at 12 milligram. Because if this child is acidotic, if he's hypothermic, if he's premature, if he's uh, premature, he is prone to get connectus much earlier than a full-term baby. So you have to, what is happening in neonatology, you need to anticipate a problem. And you will be surprised that you can get, get connectus at 8 milligrams, 10 milligrams in a baby who is 1500 grams. But he has a respiratory distress syndrome, he has hypoglycemia, he has hyponatremia, he has acidosis. So we need to anticipate these children and avoid connectives as much as possible. What are the precautions which should be taken to prevent neonatal jaundice? First of all, let's see antenatal. The obstetrician needs to go into very peacefully in the history of the mother. Whether the mother is aware of her blood group, father's blood group, are they positive or negative? That's number one. Number two, is it previous history of children having any problem? If previous children had problem, we go into first, why did he have the problem? Did they have physiological jaundice? Did they have a jaundice because of abio incompatibility? Did they have a congenital like obstructive jaundice? So we have to ensure what is the cause of jaundice in the previous pregnancy. Then. If there is a cause like AB or RH incompatibility, one need to give first, do an ICT, that is indirect Coombs test in the mother's blood. If it is positive, we follow up this mother, again do the titus every two weeks. And by 28-30 weeks, we give them anti-D. Why we give them anti-D? That there is always a little peep from the fetus to the maternal blood. So even if it is not immunized, it is good for the next baby. So 0.3 ml is also enough to immunize the mother. With the result, you have to give anti-D. The moment the baby is born, you collect the cord blood of an RH negative mother. You have a blood group, cord blood, DCA, DCT, and next is bilirubin and hemoglobin. And you follow up this child in a patient like when it is ABO or RH incompatibility. In the case of physiological jaundice, please feed early. Earlier you feed, better it is. In third point, if it is G6PD, for example, if you know it's a male child, G6PD deficiency, you have to see that you don't give medications which, cannot, which should not be given in G6PD deficiency. And thereon, follow these babies and look into it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your experience.